Okay, so this section is on how to do the five problems associated with the mole. There are five different types of problems. You have atom to mole, and then you have mole to atom. So you've got the arrow there that shows going both ways. So atom to mole and mole to atom, they are related. They are opposites of one another. And then you have mass to mole, mole to mass. And then you have something called molar mass, which is embedded in almost every single thing that you do in chemistry. In the first type of question, an atom to mole question, your example is how many moles are in 5.42 times 10 to the 25th atoms of carbon? So if you look back at what I call your mole Bibles or your mole note Bibles, you're going to find that the first thing you have to do is identify what is given because that's what you have to start every problem with. So you have 5.42 times 10 to the 25th atoms of carbon. And you're going to use your unit analysis and you're going to try and change this into moles of carbon. And I get to my, I get to that ratio step or my unit conversion step and I'm not really sure what to do. I want to get rid of that atoms which means that if my atoms is in the numerator that means atoms has to go in the denominator. And I go back to Avogadro's number, which means mo one mole of any substance equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now when I have that, and I plug it in, I find that my atoms cancel. I leave my numbers the same. Mole carbon is there. Mole carbon is there. So I have exactly what it is I'm looking for. Once I plug in my numbers into my calculator, I should get 90.00 moles of carbon. Now what we found in class is that it's not necessarily the division that's the issue, but it's getting everything in the calculator. So remember that when you're putting in your exponents, if you have an EXP button, you're just using that. If you have the capital E, capital E button, just use that. You're going to use your second EE button. But don't use your EXP button and then do your times 10 because it'll mess up your math. In the converse of atom to mole, now you've got mole to atom. And in the previous example, you did division. So if this is the opposite, it seems that you would do multiplication. So let's see. Your question's got how many atoms are in 6.5 moles of hydrogen. So what do we do? We start with what's given. So I have 6.5 moles of hydrogen. And the abbreviation for mole is M-O-L-E, or M-O-L, which seems strange. You could just go ahead and add the E, but whatever. Whatever makes it makes you happy. You're trying to go from mole to atom. Because I want to be able to cross out mole, I'm going to put moles of hydrogen down in the num or in the denominator, and I'm going to put atoms in the numerator. One mole of any substance is big Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. I go through, my moles cancel, I want atoms, I end up with atoms, and I'm left with multiplication. Once I run my numbers, I should get 3.91 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Now it's worth noting that when you're dealing with moles and you're looking for moles, it's going to be a smaller number. Get in your head that atoms, since they're really, really small, these are going to be huge numbers, like larger numbers, ones with exponents. And if you have a number with an exponent that's large for moles, you've more than likely done the problem wrong. In the next type of problem, I'm going to deal with mass times mole, or mass to mole. And the question is, how many moles of potassium are in 300 grams of potassium? So there are a couple of things you need to notice. Notice that there's no atoms there, which means that you don't use Avogadro's number. And instead, now, we're, we're dealing with mass. And when we're dealing with mass in particular elements, that's when we're going to be using the periodic table. So again, we start with what we know, 300 grams of potassium. And I'm going to use the symbol for potassium rather than writing it out. And we're going from mass to mole, so I started with grams, I want to end up with moles. And it's going to be a one-step problem. 
problem. So I want to get rid of my grams of potassium, so I'm going to put grams of potassium at the bottom, and in the numerator I'm going to put one mole of potassium. Then I have to find out the mass of potassium. Well, I look on my chart, and potassium's number 90, it's number 19, and when you look at the mass, when it rounds out, it's going to be 39.10. So one mole of potassium equals 39.10 grams of potassium. Your grams of potassium cancel. You're left with moles. This is exactly what you want. So basically you're going to go through. You're going to divide 300 by 39.1. You run your numbers and your answer should be 7.67 moles of potassium. Now the opposite of the last problem type is now mole to mass. So before when you divided, when mass to mole, since it's the opposite, you're probably going to multiply, but we'll see. Again, you're going to start with what's given in the problem. You've got how many grams are in 4.2 moles of carbon. So you're given 4.2 moles, so that's what you start with. It is important what element you use, so you are going to list what element you're dealing with. You're looking for grams of carbon. Mole is in the numerator over on the left, so you want moles of carbon to be in the denominator, and I'm going to use one mole of carbon, and I want to end up with grams of carbon, so grams of carbon goes in the numerator. Again, I'm going to look for carbon on the periodic table. It's number six on the periodic table, and it has a mass of 12.01. I want to go back and double check to make sure that I've got everything set up. My moles carbon cancel. I'm left with grams of carbon, which is what I want. I'm left with multiplying 4.2 times 12.01. And when I run all the numbers, it's going to be 50.44 grams of carbon. Okay, the last problem, which is one that is strewn throughout all of chemistry, is molar mass. And essentially what you're doing is you're trying to figure out how many parts of the compound the compound has, and how much each part weighs, and then add each of those parts together. So for molar mass, in this particular problem, you've got how many grams are in one mole of potassium sulfide. This isn't a super easy question for no other reason than I haven't told you what potassium sulfide is. So you have to go through and figure out what potassium sulfide is. The symbol for potassium is K, the symbol for sulfur is S. Or sulfide would be sulfur and it's S. So then you look on your periodic table and find the charges or the oxidation states. Potassium's in group one, so it's going to have a plus one. Sulfur has a negative two. You're going to swap and drop, and so now you have K2S. And that is your compound that you're dealing with, K2S for potassium sulfide. So, we know that we have potassium and we have sulfur. We look at our formula here, and we can see that there are two atoms of potassium and one atom of sulfur. The next thing we need to do is look at our periodic table and find potassium. It's number 19 on the chart. It's in group 1. We have to look for its mass, and its mass is 39.10 grams. Because there are two atoms there, you would multiply it together. And when you do that, it's 39 times 2. It's going to be the mass for the piece of potassium of that compound is 78.20 grams. Now, sulfur is number 16, and it's in group 16. It's got a mass of 32.07 grams. Because you've just got the one atom, you'd only, you, know, you can multiply it by the one, which is fine. So you've got 32.07. Once you have those two numbers, you have to add them together. So you take your 78.2 and add it to 32.07, and that's going to give you 110.27 grams. So what does that mean? That means that one mole of K2S is equal to 110.27 grams. And that is the molar mass of one, comp uh, one mole of potassium sulfide. 
I'm going to do one last example for molar mass, and I'm going to give you one that's very unfriendly. So what's the molar mass of calcium nitrate? And for a lot of you, naming seems like it was a long time ago. It's one of those times where you're going to need to go back and look at your notes on naming, and I'll put some videos on naming, but you still need to go back and look. Calcium nitrate. Well, calcium is Ca. Nitrate doesn't show up on the chart by itself. Instead, it's a polyatomic, and if you look on the listing of polyatomics that you have, nitrate stands out as NO3. Calcium's in group 2, therefore it's going to have a positive 2 charge, and nitrate, when you look at your polyatomic charges, it's going to have a charge of negative 1. You're still going to swap and drop, so it's going to be CaNO3 with a 2 on the outside of the parentheses. That is your formula for calcium nitrate. So in pulling together how to um, find a mass for calcium nitrate, I still have to take my individual elements. So I have calcium, I have nitrogen, and I have oxygen. And again, I've looked for my capital letters, and that's going to indicate my new elements. So when I'm looking at this molecule, I still have one calcium. I have two nitrates, and I have six oxygens, because that two is going to distribute to the things inside the parentheses. Then I'm going to look at my chart. Calcium is 40.08, at least that's its mass, and I'm going to multiply that by the one, so I've got 40.08. My nitrogen is number seven on the chart. It has a mass of 14.01 grams, each one does, so when you multiply that, it's 28.02. And oxygen is number 8 on the chart. It's got a mass of 16 grams, and that's going to come to 96 grams. I have my three pieces together, and I'm going to add them together. Since I know what each of my three pieces weigh, so I have 40.08 added to 22.02 added to 96, and that is going to give me a grand total of 164 0.10 grams, and that is a mole of calcium nitrate. And again, because it's mass, it's got to be in grams. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.